We have one more grade to give out in our report card series. That's to the Mariners' ownership. We'll also discuss the impending free agencies of Tom Murphy and Teoscar Hernandez coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, in it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. This is Tidane Gonzalez and Colby Pattenhead for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-D-O-N to get yourself started. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. And on the show today, we'll hand out our 2023 grade to Mariners ownership and discuss the impending free agencies of both Teoscar Hernandez, Tom Murphy, do the mayors bring them back? What's it going to cost, etc. But let's start with the Mariners' ownership and more specifically John Stanton. We were planning on wrapping up our grades yesterday, uh, but we decided to call an audible at the end because Colby wanted more time to talk about Stanton. So, Colby, you said I just need to give you the floor and get out of your way. So, I'm going to do <laughs> just that. Have fun. Yeah, I guess we'll just start right off the top here. The grade is an F minus, and it's only an F minus because I can't go any lower. Um, John Stanton is a guy who loves to be the center of attention when things are going well. Look at Ichiro Hall of Fame weekend. Look at Felix Hall of Fame weekend. He loves to be the guy giving interviews after the Mariners break their playoff drought, but he doesn't really like to be held accountable, which makes a ton of sense because he's a billionaire. He's never been accountable for anything in his entire life. This guy loves to tell people all I care about is winning. I want to win. And we have zero evidence to suggest that that's true. None, zero zip. Here's the beauty of this narrative, John, you can change it in one off season. You absolutely can, but you're not going to, because this is a team that has proven time and time again, whether it was the Howard Lincoln led group or whether it's you, that you care about profit a little bit more than you care about winning. Oh, you want to win, but not if it gets in the way of my profit. I have to make money in order for me to want to win. My wanting to win is conditional on the fact that I can turn a profit because I don't really care about anything else but money. I've proven it time and time and time again. Like when you're one of the most profitable teams in baseball last year, and what did you do? Oh, we we made this $10,000 all-star club thing that no no fan who ever listens to this show will ever sit in like oh we we put out a, a parking lot we bought a bar across the street these are all things that are great for fans you know what's better for fans john winning baseball games pretending that you give a crap about anything that's happening with the baseball organization instead of this like oh i want to win more than anything as you go on 710 once a year and they lob you softballs because they're afraid that they're gonna you know upset this this owner, well, I don't care about upsetting you because frankly, you're a coward. We've been over this before. You're a bum. You are a plague to the Seattle Mariners. You can change it in an instant, just like that. You have the money. You've made plenty of money from buying this team. Don't tell me you don't have the money. Don't tell me that, oh, well, we had to pinch a little bit. You pinched in 2020, you pinched in 2021, and you've kind of pinched in the last two off seasons. You have the money. Spend it. Of course you have the money. Get out of Jerry's way. And when Jerry comes to you and says, we want to do this, you say, how much is the check? And you write the damn check. That is your job as the owner. Shut up, sit down, hand out the checks. That is it. I don't need to see you on 710. I don't need to hear you tell people, I love winning so much. I just want to win a World Series. BS, you haven't shown us. You've said it. Now you have to show us. It's not rocket science. You have had the opportunity the last two off seasons to push your poker chips into the middle and to say, to say, I am all in on this team. I want to win. That is what I care about. What did you choose and said? Maximize profits. That's what you care about because that's all the evidence we have. All you care about is that you want to maximize your profits. 
That's it. If you happen to win, great, more money. But you're not willing to spend more money to get more money. And that's a shame. Because let me tell you something, John. You may own the team. It doesn't belong to you. It's my team. It's Ty's team. It's everybody who listens to the show's team. You bought it. Doesn't mean you own it. You have a responsibility to the city, to this fan base, to this organization, to the players in the freaking clubhouse to back up what you've been saying for the last six years that I want to win a World Series. That's all I care about. Prove it. This isn't difficult. Put your money where your mouth is, or at least do us all the courtesy of shutting the hell up and sitting down. Just zip it. We're not stupid, okay? Stop treating the fans like they're idiots, and they're like, oh, well, you should be grateful that I I made this diamond club for you that none of you will ever be able to afford to sit in. Oh, I bought this bar across the street. Cool. Awesome. Am I going to spend the money that that makes on the baseball product? No, of course not. That's going right into my pocket. You're not running this this team at a loss. Stop it. Stop pretending like there are, oh, there are so many expenses that we couldn't foresee. You know exactly how much you need. You know exactly how much you're going to make. And you know for a fact that you have made money that is just unfathomable to everybody else on this planet. You have made it tenfold since you bought this team. Stop lying. Start cutting the checks. Get out of Jerry's way. And if Jerry doesn't want to spend your money, then you fire Jerry and you find somebody who wants to. It's not rocket science. You don't get to be, oh, look at me. I'm Mr. Popular. I saved the Mariners. I I got them to the playoffs. Who cares? World Series or bust. Or if your goal is not to win the World Series, then stop saying it is. You're a bum. You're a you're plague. You're pathetic. You're a liar. Like, what more do you want? You are a liar if you're telling us that I want to win the World Series, and yet you're still choosing to maximize your profits over going out and getting a damn middle reliever for $7 million bucks. What is it? Pick. Either let Jerry do the job or shut the hell up and sit down. Stop lying to fans. Stop telling them you care about this when all of your actions say you don't. It's time. It is time. It was time last year. But you know what? Since you didn't do it last year, here's the beauty of it. You can do it again this year and nobody will care. Do it this year. Push your chips in the middle. It's time for you to say, we're the Seattle Mariners. We're here. We're going to spend. We are here. We want to win the World Series. Enough of this falling one or two games back and just, oh, well, you know, nothing we could really do. Oh, you know, we we just couldn't find the right deal. Find it. Spend the money. It's so beyond insulting that you sit here and be like, oh, well, you know, we really do want to win the World Series. Meanwhile, you're running payrolls that are in the the 20th, 17th highest payroll in baseball when you're the 12th highest media market. When you have this gorgeous stadium, when you've hosted when you've hosted playoff games, when you've hosted the all star game, when you have the money to renovate, you know, where the rich people sit in T-Mobile Park and you have the money to buy property in downtown Seattle but you don't have the money to go out and build a team that's going to win a hundred games so that we don't have to do this thing every other year where it's like, Oh, we go to game 161 and maybe they make it. Maybe things go their way and they don't. This is the time right now. You missed your shot last year. You did. You missed. Don't miss again. I'm not asking for you to spend a hundred million dollars in additional payroll, but you know what? You have the money. So why not? I'm asking you, to get out of Jerry's way, give him the checks that he needs, and let him do his job. And if you can't do that, go away forever. Hide in the darkness. Hide in the shadows. I don't want to see you when they, if they ever win a World Series. I don't want to hear you on 710. Because you know what? If you're not willing to answer the tough questions, your appearances to the media are absolutely worthless. Go hide in the corner and let Jerry take all the arrows for you, just like you did at the end of the year press conference. Right. Go away. Put up or shut up. Those are your options. I'll take either one, honestly. So, grade? F minus. F, F minus. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Allowing Jerry to take your arrows for you after evidently restricting him and, and Justin Hollander, and then not even having the gall to come out after that disaster of a press conference and issue some form of retraction as the owner, as the face of the Mariners organization, 
after you sat there behind the cameras as that disaster of a press conference happened as well. Again, that all goes back to what you were saying with he loves being in front of the camera when things are great, but when things are are bad, he's off hiding in the back behind the cameras. Literally hiding. Literally hiding. Literally in, hiding. In the room, he should not willing to get in front of the cameras. He should have been up there along with Jerry DePoto and Justin Hollander and Scott Service or by himself. Mm-hmm. And that ended your presser. Jerry shouldn't have been taking all the heat. Jerry shouldn't have been taking all the questions. That's not to you know, absolve Jerry of what he did and what he said and the, and the timing of the way that uh, of, of the things that he said and the way that he phrased the things that he said. But Stanton should have been up there as well. And after Jerry basically embarrassed the organization and by virtue of the fan base on a national scale, Stanton should have come out and said something. And he didn't. And that's just one of many things on a long list of issues that I have with Stanton. And really, like, I didn't really care about Stanton I didn't know enough about Stanton until really the Kevin Mather thing happened and that's when this really started to begin for me and I and I recognize from that point forward like yeah this this guy uh he doesn't have a clue (laughs) just to put it lightly there's some other things that I would like to say about him but that's uh more for the Patreon show (laughs) but yeah F minus for Mr. Stanton and the Mariners ownership group do better do better all right let's uh let's switch gears here let's talk more about the baseball ops side of things let's talk about free agency teoscar hernandez and tom murphy those are two of the mariners top free agents heading into this winter we're going to be going over them in just a moment but first a reminder this episode of the locked on mariners podcast is brought to you by jace medical modern medical care and treatment are important but our global supply chains are fragile Things like pandemics, natural disasters, and foreign travel may cut you off from the treatment you need. Jace Medical is your solution for that. Just fill out our online form and one of our board-certified physicians will review it to determine whether medications are safe and appropriate. Then they will send your prescriptions to one of our partner pharmacies where your Jace order will be filled and mailed directly to your home. Everyone should feel empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off by using the promo code LOCKEDON at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Before we get into the free agency previews for both Teoscar Hernandez and Tom Murphy on today's show, quick reminder, Colby has given away some stuff colby what are you giving away apparently nothing uh you slackers so uh if we do get to 9500 uh by the end or by what tuesday yep tuesday's show i'll give one of you this map rash card but you're not getting there Sorry, monday show monday show. okay well whatever so i doubt anybody's gonna win this bryce miller card i doubt anybody's gonna win this brian Wu card and i really doubt anybody's gonna win this harry ford card mm. so that's what you could win but no you're like John mm. Stanton. You're sitting on your butt, not willing to risk it, which is nothing to get hiding the away, mm-hmm. hiding behind the cameras, too yep. afraid to push a button and yep. leave a comment. Mm-hmm. But you know, if, if you don't want to be John Stanton, Ty will tell you how. This doesn't even cost you money. That's the beauty yeah. of it, too. Yeah, you just have to subscribe to the Locked On Mariners YouTube channel, which you may be on right now. The subscribe button is right below our faces if you're watching us on YouTube right now. If you're not, if you're listening to us on a podcast platform, head on over to YouTube.com, type Locked On Mariners in the search bar, and hit subscribe. And then leave a comment on one of our episodes, including this one, dating back to last Tuesday and in between that time and uh, Monday and uh, you'll be entered automatically for a chance to win one of those cards. But again, we have to reach some subscriber goals in order for Colby to give away those cards. So at 9,500, he's giving away the Matt Brash card. At 9,750, he's giving away the Bryce Miller card. At 10,000, he's giving away the Brian Wu card. And at 10,250, he's giving away the Harry Ford card. But you guys got to pick it up. I'm telling you, you got to pick it up. These are dope cards. You want these cards. So tell a friend. 
tell your enemy, put it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Share, share, share the news that we're running this giveaway with all the Mariners fans that you know, so we can give these cards away because I love it when Colby has to give away his stuff. It is glorious. It is amazing. Full terms and conditions for this giveaway down in the description of this episode. So, Colby, to Oscar Hernandez, is there any world where you're willing to to bring back Teoscar Hernandez. No. Not really. No. I mean, like if he wants a one year eight million bucks, sure. But that's not gonna happen. No, I'm not offering him the qualifying offer. I'm not giving him fifteen million dollars. Like no. He's a player who's on the decline. At least that's how it looks. Uh, He magically hit 30 years old and he's had you know, his worst seasons in a couple of years and back to back years, uh, strikeout rates are going up. He's chasing more defense is getting worse. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm, I'm not interested. I mean, is it a disaster if they bring him back on like a one year $14 million deal? No, it's not a disaster. Um, but I don't view that as an upgrade. I'm obviously not. Cause he was just here. Like it, it's, you still need two everyday bats. Uh, even if you re-sign Tay Oscar. So I think I can do better for the $14 million. Um, I can go get a, you know, a high leverage reliever or two. I can go get, yeah. you know, a, a high leverage reliever and a platoon partner or a fourth outfielder, somebody who could play some defense. I could go get a starting pitcher for $14 million. I could do better for $14 million than Tay Oscar Hernandez. And I'm assuming, and again, that's best case scenario, is that he's willing to take one year and $14 million. I'm not willing to give him 20 million on a QO. I'm not willing to give him multiple years. Like I'm, I'm out, I'm out. So, uh, you know, thanks for everything you did tail. Um, there were some good moments. There were a lot of bad. Uh, I don't dislike you. I, I don't think you're necessarily an issue in the clubhouse. I haven't heard that um, yeah. from anybody. Like I, I, I don't have any ill, ill will towards Teoscar Hernandez. I just don't want him on my baseball team next year. I feel like I can do better. So again, if we're, unless we're talking about his market tanks and it's one year, eight to $10 million, like, no, thanks. I think I can do better. I'm very interested to hear what you think he might actually wind up getting on the, on the free agent market this winter. Um, pretty poor class, although corner outfield's not terrible. So, mm. um, overall though, the bats they lack. Uh, but again, second year in a row on a decline, strikes out a lot, uh, def- quickly heading towards DH only. Um, I think Mitch Hanniger, like what Hanniger got, if, if you maxed out Hanniger's deal, I think that's mm-hmm. probably about uh, what he can expect. Um, maybe a bit more because he's been durable uh, at the very mm-hmm. least, which Mitch is not. So I think he probably maxes out three and 50, somewhere in that range. Maybe because it's a bad class, maybe it's four and 65 or something like that uh mm-hmm. but uh he's not he's not getting 100 million dollars um, no i i doubt he even gets 75 million but uh which is also we'll another reason that you wouldn't want to give him the qualifying offer or why it's really not worth like the reward of giving him the qualifying offer and him signing elsewhere is not really worth it worth the risk of him taking that one year 20 million dollars from you right it, no because assuming he has the qualifying offer attached to him, mm. he's probably getting less than that even right. Less than what I just said. And, and you, he has to sign for more than $50 million for you to get a, a pick at the end of the second round. Uh, right. If he has a QO attached to him, he's not signing. He's not getting that. Um, and so then your reward for the risk is a pick after the fourth round. After about 160 players have gone off the board. No, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I don't want to be that, stuck paying him twenty million dollars for a you know a shot at yeah rock. I mean, if the Mariners have endless money, sure, I'm willing to take another flyer on on Teo, but they don't. Either they don't man. have endless money, and twenty million dollars is probably going to you know, if we're being realistic here, it's probably going to take a decent chunk out of what uh, Jerry has available to him uh, to spend this off season. So you're not really getting better there if you're essentially spending a good chunk of the money available to you to just run it back. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I know I can, I can go get a really solid platoon of guys who can play defense mm-hmm. and, you know, get on base walk. Yeah. I know I can go get that for less than $20 million, certainly. So, yeah. uh, I just, 
I, I, I'm not willing to run the risk that he understands how bad his market is and he takes it. Uh, again, is it a disaster? No, there's no such thing as a disastrous one-year deal. Uh, that, right. that doesn't exist. Like if it's just one year, take a shot. Sure. Why not? Um, but no, I'm not willing to do it at $20 million and I'm not willing to run the risk that he accepts a $20 million offer so that I can get another shot at Brock Roden or, or, um, you know, it, it, this isn't a very good draft class either early into early reports say it's not a great draft class. Uh, sure, you kind of sure. have to wait and see, but having an extra pick in the middle of, of day two, not really worth $20 million. Not really worth that gamble. Yeah. If I had to guess, he's going back home, though. He's going back to the Blue Jays. Kevin Kiermaier is a free agent. I think that Varsho is probably going to be their center fielder, so they're going to need a corner outfielder. I think Teo is going back to Toronto if I had to put money on it. All right. Let's talk about Tom Murphy's impending free agency in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. October baseball is back, folks, and you can make your postseason debut with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Join FanDuel today and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, that's L-O-C-K-D-O-N, to create your new account. And you can get in on the action from the first pitch until the final out. Bet on everything from strikeouts to home runs to who will win the game. And if you don't want to wait the whole game to get a win, predict what will happen in the next that bat with quick bets so head on over to fanduel.com slash locked on right now step up to the plate this postseason with 200 in bonus bets guaranteed make every moment more with fanduel official sports betting partner of major league baseball and you're listening to the locked on Maris podcast thank you again for making us your first listen so we just talked about teoscar hernandez's impending free agency now we're talking about tom murphy's impending free agency this one is very interesting because when Murphy was healthy this year, he was one of the best hitting catchers in all of baseball. Struggled a bit defensively, specifically in terms of defending the run game. A uh, lot of stolen bases allowed. I think he only had one caught stealing to 27 stolen bases allowed this year. Uh, so that's not very good. And then yet another injury cropped up for him, unfortunately, and he wasn't able to end the season uh, healthy so what do we think murphy is going to get on this market colby yeah uh the injuries are a real concern he's had what three of the last four seasons cut short by injury uh significant ones um and he's not even a guy who's playing every day and he's still getting hurt so uh, i think when you kind of look at the catcher market there, there are a few guys out there uh certainly um you know, and, and I think at this stage, because mostly because of the injuries, uh, Murphy is viewed as a pure backup. You can't trust him to be your primary catcher. Uh, in the, the free agent class, not terrible, a lot of backup types. Um, but I think you kind of look at what, uh, uh, you kind of look at what, uh, Luke, uh, Maley just got, uh, he got one year, 3.5 million. Uh, Maley is a backup, uh, who, you know, not as good offensively as, as Tom, but, uh, you know, apparently uh, pretty good defensively. So I think you just kind of look in general what backup catchers get. You know, I think Zanino got – what what did Zanino get? He got like 2-10 and 10 or something like that. Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think you look at guys who are primary backups, uh, guys who have injury history. I think that Maley's 3.5 mil is probably the floor, uh, but I don't think the ceiling's that much higher. I, I think – you know, if somebody's willing to give Tom Murphy $7 million, you probably say goodbye and, and you, you find somebody else. But uh, mm. if he's, you know, within 3.5, if he's, you know, a million bucks more than that or, or something like that, I think you're you're definitely interested because there is a uh, there's also a leadership uh, bonus here. Uh, Murphy is, by all accounts, like really important in that clubhouse. So. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that, I think that, you know, you, you do what you can and, and there's definitely a limit, but if Tom wants 5 million bucks, I, I think it's probably worth that. If, if he starts talking six, seven, eight, I think you're out and, and you just try and find somebody else. But, uh, mainly I think at 3.5 is, is probably a, a good place to start from. And, and then you kind of try and factor in everything that Tom brings to the table and everything he doesn't. So, uh, I, I think four and a half, five million million bucks is, is probably going to get it done yeah that's also probably the ceiling for me uh once we get beyond that five million dollar mark because again 
we're trying to live in reality here. Jerry Depoto and Justin Hollander aren't going to have endless amounts of money here. So you got to be smart about how you those funds. And if it gets into the six, seven, eight million dollar range, that might cut into your ability to sign a, you know, a high leverage reliever, which we said or sure. Actually, I think we talked about that on tomorrow's episode, which we recorded yesterday. But that's a that's a very important thing that you and I both think the the mayors need to get very aggressive on uh, this winter. So um yeah, so so if it impacts other things, if it gets to a point where it's going to impact other things that you're uh that you're trying to do this off season, then I'm probably out. Uh, but obviously, yeah, like you mentioned, he's so important to the Mariners on a, on a leadership uh, perspective um, by all accounts. And again, when he's healthy, you know, the last couple of years, he's been very good hitting wise mm-hmm. defensively is another question, but hitting wise, he's been one of the best hitting catchers in all of baseball for, for a little while now. I mean, for the last three of four seasons that he's played in, uh, he's been very productive at the plate. Now, last year, you know, 2022 was only like 14 games, but he was really good in those 14 games. Um, And this year, you know, minimum 140 plate appearances amongst all catchers. Uh, He was third in WRC plus with a 140 WRC plus. He was just trailing Luis Campisano and uh, Yiner Diaz in that, uh, in that department. So um, yeah, like if you get Murphy back, I mean, you have, as long as he can stay healthy, you have one of the best catching, catching situations in all of baseball. Um, mm-hmm. if not the best in terms of like just a one two punch, say, right? Yeah, I would say yeah. the best, uh, because both yeah. those guys can hit and they both complement each other perfectly. Cal is much better against righties, Tom is much better against lefties. Like, yeah. they, it's 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 the ideal situation for your catcher if you felt good that Tom Murphy could play in, in 70 games, you shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we'll see how that factors in, but you know, just quick look at the at the market. Uh, for catchers, Jorge Alfaro, Tucker Barnhart, Victor Carantini, Kirk Casale, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mitch Garver, probably too expensive. Jan Gomes, we'll see. Eric Haas has had some big years uh, in the past, not so much mm-hmm. this last year. Yasmani Grandal, um, you know, yeah, uh, these are all backups. Hedges, Maldonado, Carlos yeah. Perez, Manny Pena, uh, definitely not Maldonado. No, Gary Sanchez, uh, and Mike Zanino. Yeah. By the way, Zanino's deal last year, uh, six million bucks. So, hmm. you know, I, I think that's probably a bit too much because Murphy's a better hitter. Certainly, yeah. Zanino is at least available every day, and Zanino's a better defender. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if, if they brought back Zanino. Uh, if Murphy says no, or if Murphy signs elsewhere, I think Zanino makes some sense. It's a guy who has crushed lefties in the past, but. Oh boy. <laughs> Talk about how important it is to eliminate strikeouts, which I think is overblown, but Jerry said it publicly. And then you bring in Mike yeah. Sanino. Might as well bring in Joey Gallo while you're at it. Yeah. I, I love Big Z though. So if they if they brought back Z, I, I'd be totally for it. Emergency <laughs> podcast when they do it. Even if yeah. it's a minor league deal. Yeah. One hundred percent. We'll bring back Absolutely. Junino. Jun- yeah, Jun- yeah, Junino. Junino. Yeah. yeah. It was, was very it good in that month of June. Yeah, I'm pretty June. sure it was, it was June. June. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because like the the pun doesn't work if it's July. July no. I mean, no, yeah. It it was June. Yeah. It was June. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for our show. Uh, before we get out of here, question of the day for you guys: What is your favorite Halloween movie? Not the series, just any Halloween theme movie. And no, not any horror movie. I want to make that very clear. It has to specifically be centered around Halloween. So, what is your favorite? Halloween Harry Potter movie. I mean, is there a Halloween part? Yeah, the first one. Troll yeah, yeah, in the yeah. Dungeon. Yeah. 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 Uh, there you go. Sorcerer's Halloween Stone Town. counts. Halloween Town. Halloween there you Town. Go. Disney Channel. Nightmare yeah. Before Christmas. Nightmare Before oh, yeah. Christmas would be my okay. choice. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does, does Coco count? Because that's not Halloween, but it's like a very similar, like, it Festival. has to be centered around how well. No, it does. I, I make my own rules. I choose Coco. All right, Coco. Actually, I haven't. I haven't best... seen. I haven't seen. I haven't seen Coco. To be honest with you, yeah. It is the okay. best non Toy Story Pixar movie. Okay. Ever. All right. I need to. I need to get on that. So I've I've missed out. I've I've missed out on the last few Pixar movies. So I don't actually know, you know if what? there's like a Halloween For my question celebration of the day, in that movie. What's the best Pixar movie? All right, there Boom. you go. So, Answer best Halloween one. and best Pixar movie. Leave them down 
in the comments below. Actually, it's not best, it's favorite, which are two very different things. Want to make that distinction. Okay, fine. It feels like you, the best should be your favorite, but whatever. If you think it's the best, I, you probably I feel like I feel like best is more of an objective thing, whereas favorite could be like it could be your favorite for multiple reasons, oh, like so... nostalgia. Hmm. Yeah, which like nostalgia shouldn't play into an objective that's why it ties discussion. Spider Man One, Stan, even though it's like the worst Spider Man movie. Sp Spider Man Two though is like fire. Spider Man Two movie. is like the fifth best Spider Man movie. Anyways, it's we'll really see you guys not. next time. Really Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast for Colby Patnoed. I'm Tidy Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dan Gonzalez, S D A N E G N Z L C, and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day. We'll see you next time. Peace.